Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle bales. Now, bales is a grid pattern. And you can do your grid, you know, whatever size you want. A lot of times I like to say, draw it bigger than you think. Because if it's too small, then sometimes you might not be able to fit components in. Or it just might take a really long time. Or you might go cross-eyed in the process and that's not good. So I already have my grid uh, drawn here. Um, so, and and I'm, I'm doing this one big also so that way you can see it. Because I'm doing this on a 2x2 two two, uh, bijou tile. Um, Number one, so that way I work to be quick um, without, you know, filling a whole entire um, piece. And that way you can kind of see a finished product. And um, so that's why I've, I've done it on the small tile and also drawn it big. So once you have your grid, we're, it's basically, it's grid and curved lines. And that's, and then, then you can decorate and that's pretty much it. So this one, uh, and it now whichever way you go, sometimes I go from left to right, sometimes I go right to left. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason, but you know, pick a pick a side, and we're gonna just do a curved line, just like that. And on, I, I would do it on um, in all of the boxes. Do it on the same side. It just makes it a little bit easier. And then two, you're kind of in the groove of it, so then that's good. Then we turn the tile. Same thing. Curved line, curved line. These ones I, <laughs> I just did what I, I was about to do what I, this is why I say not to do it because, you know, get going and then you're looking and you're like, oh, well, how in the heck did I miss this line? That's how you do it. All right. <laughs> Although sometimes talking and tangling uh, don't always mix. Now, here, this is what's funny. And I, uh, I'll find the tangle name for that. I think there's a tangle that just does two sides and it's really cool. Um, that'll be another video. That'll be a super quick video. Um, so then you just tur turn the tile again. Same idea. And these curves, I, tr I try not to make them, you know, arching too far up. Just a little bit of a rise over that uh, grid line. And this one is kind of neat because once you're done... Now, if I had done you know, the outside, it, you know, you can see where it would look like circles with, you know, squares within circles. And it's kind of neat. Oops. And I missed one. <laughs> see, see, I did it. Oh my gosh. Try not to do that. Cause then, and you always catch it when you go back and you're doing either shading or doing something else. So we have this. So this is, this is now essentially bales. Now there are a number of different ways that you can finish this up. And uh, let's see, I'll try to do four and I'll do one in each box. So one simple way is, I, I've seen it where you just put a little cross, you know, go from diagonal to diagonal, just like that. And when you do all of them, it looks really, really neat. Another way is to um, basically aura, which uh, if you are new to Zentangle and don't know the lingo, to aura is like an outline, as you can see. And you could do that. You could do it a couple times. You could, I'm going to grab... Uh, a thicker, a bigger nibbed pen here. Let's see. Let's go for the gusto. We'll go for the 12. What I'm using is an 01. This is a 12. These are new. Now you could, you could do this. You could also add a big old dot inside, you know, the squares. Um, but what I like to do sometimes with this one is I like to just color this one in. And I shared the dot there because it's like, oh, then I can get more than four out of one four square uh, set of bales, we'll call it. Sometimes I, I, I usually like to do the edges. I would probably normally do it a little bit with a thinner one, just around those edges for sure, because then it gets a little sloppy. And let me share this with you. If you do something like this or anytime you're tangling, um, and if you've been watching my videos, you know exactly what I'm going to say. This is like course correction number one. No such thing as mistakes in Zentangle, but we do have course corrections and that's one of them. So like if you didn't like your, your arch or, you know, like I kind of went over and it's just a little sloppy, then you can just go over and stretch that out a little bit more. No one will know but you and uh, a tangler never reveals their secrets. <laughs> okay, so that's one. The other ones I've seen um, are just... You know, putting a big blob 
not a blob, a big darkened orb in the center, just like that. And that's it. And let's see. And then, you know, also you can just leave it as it is. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave that like that. Wait, wait, yeah, I will. Um, well, no, you can see you, you saw what it looks like plain. Let me do this. So if you, if your uh, grid is big enough, and I suppose if your pen is fine enough, so I did, here's one aura and, and we showed with the circle. Now you could do, do a circle and have it, you know, butt up against, then you could, uh, shade, you could, uh, color in, uh, anything else, but you could also, you could just, you know, aura it a couple times and then that looks kind of neat. And then if you really wanted to, this might make it a whole nother tangle that maybe I've invented one. Okay. I have documented proof. <laughs> this is how sometimes tangles just come about because you could oh that was a little sloppy you know connect to those corners so it's kind of like the cross and the aura um you know you could combine them this this is what's fun because it's up this is like up to your creativity and again you don't have to do anything you could just have left it uh plain now one of the things that i do like to do when i'm sh when um oh, i should uh, um i should do another one but then that will make, oh, well, that wouldn't make it too long. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's see. And I think I might we'll do another quick one um, right here in a second. All right. So here's one, a smaller grid. And I also want to show you something else. So if you do it, so this, I have done four corners, did the border and then put my grid in. So this is a much smaller grid and this one I'm going to leave plain, but I wanted to just share with you. Uh, if you end up doing something like this, where you have partial boxes, this is uh, we call this a hollow bow technique where we're essentially drawing behind. And so what I do, so I've, you know, I've done all of these already and I like to do the full ones first. So that way the curve gets in my hand and in my head. And then what I simply do is, you know, I pretend like I'm drawing the whole thing. Um, I just stop where the pencil line is, but the arch part is correct. And then like here, you know, I come down and just, you know, put that little, that little extra piece in because if, uh, this was actually, um, you know, a grid and I put something over it, that's, that's what you'd see. And so I like to make sure to do that. All right, let me turn these and this way you can kind of just see more of that. I thought that was important to show you. Yeah, so what you would not do is, uh, say, do a curved line. Because um, I remember when I was first first tangling, so the temptation was, oh, I'll just make a little one here. No, 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 don't do that. Um, well, let me take that back. I suppose you could if you want to. Um, oops, and I didn't get that top one here. But if you want to give the impression that this is something underneath, then you f that this is how you do that. And... And then also, this also it gives you a little idea of, um, you know, it is cool to do things small. I do like doing things small, but the, the caution is, uh, like I said, it ends up taking uh, time to do, which is fine because what we, you know, when we're, when we're tangling, sometimes we just don't want to quit. Um, but I, you know, I have gotten myself, <laughs> I don't want to say into messes because it's not because I usually, you know, it's, it's somewhat on purpose, but sometimes after I have you know, started to tangle small, say like this, then it's like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? Oh, and then, then it's just, it's a multi, you know, day or whatever project. All right. So here is a finished, um, uh, bales. The one way I love to, to, um, to shade this. So if you were just to leave it plain and see how it looks so neat and you can see the circles within, you know, you see the squares and the circles that are kind of interlocking. Oops. Let me just cause I see that this did not quite meet and I want it to. So what I do is I just put a little bit of graphite in each of the intersections and go with a little bit, uh, especially if it's small like this, because when we use the tortillon or whatever you're using, if it's a, you know, a cotton swab or whatever, um, we don't want it to go out too far because we need to have, um, it, well, we need to have some of the original tile color 
in the middle of these. And these are actually seeds. If you took out that line in the middle, that's how we, we call them seeds. And that's how we essentially draw them. It's a curved line going one way and a curved line going the other way. So uh, to make this effective, we don't want it to go out too far. So I'm just kind of being careful to maybe put it out a quarter, not more than say a third of the way in to, you know, to that middle. And then, you, I mean, you can always go back and, and, and go darker if you want to. Oops, in this. Okay. And so you can see it, it, it gives it like a, um, what is that called? Is it tuft? You know, I think of um, furniture sometimes, you know, like a couch that has a little, you know, the buttons pushed in. And, and that's what, what it just kind of looks like to me. And so I went back and I've added a little bit of... Uh, graphite just to add a little bit more depth and as you play you'll you know you you'll have your own style um you know of with the graphite and how much you decide to add and that's essentially it so some options for decorating the inside or just leaving it plain and um and uh adding some graphite for the shading now if you know if you decided to decorate then you could always you know shade just a little bit different so like i could like totally color that in or have have shades of gray so it looks like it's going in actually it kind of looks like a square spider web doesn't it but you can also just you know do it the same way what i would highly recommend is whatever you decide to do do it consistently in the pattern because just for the the effect of it um and uh and also the repetition part so anyway with that uh it's still oh uh, that's about an average I, I was thinking i was gonna knock this one out really super quick but um, i wanted to give you all that information so i hope you enjoyed and do take a look for uh say come back to this one and there'll be a link or just uh if you uh subscribe to the channel then uh which is free of course uh, and then you'll get notified uh, with the next tangle, which is going to be a play off of this, um, but will be absolutely, completely amazing. And I know that you'll love it. So uh, with that, I wish you happy tangling.